champion, Alexandra Rakia of France, world championship bronze medalist, Bettina Plomp, and Austria, and 2014 world champion set up Oslik of Turkey suffered early defeats. Among others, 2016 world champion, bronze medalist, Sofian Agadil of France, and European champion, Matthias Gomez of Spain. They haven't made it through to the last round. In the male Cubitate, minus 67, surprises have continued with the world champion Jordan Thomas of England being defeated by Bingit Sangandikov of Kazakhstan, who will be going for a little later. In Qatar, the Japanese continue to dominate the event. Three of the four finalists in the individuals continue to take their place in the final spot. World champion Ryo Kyuna and Ishii Shimbaba will meet in the All Japan final of the male individual catcher competition. The title deciding clash between Kyo and Shimbaba will be a repetition of the final of the 2016 Karate Premier League here in Paris last year. Double world champion Kyuna won the gold medal with a 5-0 victory on that occasion. Our first final is the male Kubite minus 60 between Samiyatov Uzbekistan and Selvaju of Malaysia. I'm Billy Brennan and here with me is her Pooland who will be joining us for all of the comments. Hello, good evening. So, first match we have Sadridan Samatov of Uzbekistan. He was under 21 champion for the Asian Karate Federation in 2016. And he beat Franchi Agudil 3 0 on his way to the final. His opponent, Salvari Aju of Malaysia, he took out the powerful Jeffrey Behrens of the Netherlands 1 0. Three minute match, the first of our finals of the 2017 Paris. Karate One Premier League won the first of the five Premier Leagues to be held this year, with the grand final later in Leipzig, Germany. That'll be in September. Oh, you had some great matches early today uh, with the bronze medals going. Serap Oslik, who didn't find a way in the final, but she took a, a very Credible win with a bronze medal success. Oh, wow! Wonderful kick techniques by Aka. That was amazing. That was fantastic. Sematov takes the lead. Three points to zero. And he also has Senchu. So that means that Sevaraju has to score four points if he wants to take the gold medal. Oh, Set to the area, just a little bit of wrestling going on. But it is Silvaraju who's going to receive a Kekoku. Under two minutes left of the match. <laughs> Selvaraju still leading three points to zero, and he has the Senchu advantage. This time, Al gets the penalty for holding on. Good Jordan Zuki. Not quite the right distance. Same at off in red. Aka leading three points to zero. Silvaraju for Malaysia in blue. Holds on two hander when he goes down to the tatami. He has to be a little bit careful because he could get penalized for that. I think he will get penalized. He does right. indeed, and he's now going to be on a Han Sokachui, so he's got to be very, very careful. He's still got one, mark, one minute, 19 seconds of the match to go. He's trailing by three points. He has a Senchu advantage against him. He's on Han Sokachui, 
what on earth can he do to pull this back? He has to go for big scores. He can't afford to take another Category 2 warning. technique went in. All four judges have gone for it. Six points to zero he leads. Just 20 seconds left of the match to go. Lights are just taking a bit dipped down. Hopefully that will make a difference to the competitors. They'll still be able to focus well enough. Time is up. First gold medal of the Karate One Premier League here in Paris goes to Sematov of Uzbekistan. I just showed you some of the high scores, the three point scores, how it changes. It, it makes life so much more difficult for the opponent to come back in, doesn't it, Herb? It was a very spectacular match with the beautiful kicks, Billy. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, as you said, Sematov uh, really deserved for the winning and for the gold uh, today in Paris. Get ready now for the second of our finals. This is uh, the Kubate male minus 67 category. World champion in this was Jordan Thomas. Is Jordan Thomas of England? He was defeated earlier on, and uh, his opposition um, went, in, went on to the bronze medal position. We have here Andres Madeira in red. Coming up next, uh, his opponent is going to be Ringet Sagandikov of Kazakhstan. Madeira took a bronze medal in the 2016 World Championships. He was senior world cha uh, European champion in 2015 and silver medalist in 2016. Sagandikov of Kazakhstan was cadet world champion in 2005. He was also Asian Karate Federation champion at senior level in 2015. <laughs> Three minute match. Toro Mishuara from Japan, the referee. And there's a video review request straight away for Sagandikov. See if it's going to be successful. Video review panel just off to our right hand side here. They're looking at the split screen, four angles, one camera at each corner of just above the heads of the judges that you can see seated here. 
but it's been rejected so there's no opportunity for the coach of Sakandikov anymore to make a challenge trying to get that first score is so much more important now that the rule of Setsu has been introduced that gives you the advantage if it's an unopposed score Referee calls Yame, he'll give a passivity warning. So both will receive a Chukoku. If it's a 0 0 score, and there's uh, Hante. Oh, interesting here. So, so Handikov is uh, holding on with both hands when he went down to the tatami. But it's actually Madeira that's going to be penalized by the referee. I think Mr. Kandikov was quite lucky there, uh, was he? Yeah, both, both did the mistake. Kandikov did the mistake by grabbing his opponent, but also when you throw, you have, you have to do with one hand also yes. as well. So, yeah, both have, could have been penalized. They That's both could, yeah. 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 But Madeira was deemed uh, to be the culprit, and he's the one who received the Kekoku warning. <laughs> Looks like a, a good Zuki there. But he turned off to the side, so he didn't score. We're in the last two minutes of the match. And that's what you said, Billy, before. The sentient has to be before, during, and after. So they cannot anticipate with the scoring. That's the responsibility of the judge. So they still have to be focused on the opponents. No messing this time, though. He has three flags for Madeira. There was one flag for Sikandikov. It's interesting, actually, because... Uh, there were three flags, but uh, the, the, the coach, I think, um, put in a video review request. I don't really know why, because it was not necessary. Perhaps he didn't see the flags. So he's anticipating, he pressed the button and probably wasn't necessary. necessary. But there was one flag also for... Al for the blue, Sarkandikov, but his coach had lost the opportunity because he put in the challenge earlier and it was rejected. <laughs> now on the scoreboard it shows uh, that you can see on screen it says 1-0 for Madeira, but actually the score is 2-1. They've now corrected it. It's 2 1. And Madeira has the Sensu advantage, which means Sakandikov has got to score at least three points to win this match. We're in the last minute. That was a good Zuki from Madeira. But Sakandikov was there first. Scored with a Suzuki to the face of Madeira. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, there was a that will deserve for a contact. Yeah, that was a, that was a contact. Yes, Kelly got he definitely stopped. Madeira did punch him uh, as he, uh, afterwards. So the referee got to quite rightly. In fact, this is interesting. This is a very this, the first category one we've seen all day yeah true all of the bronze matches no contact violations whatsoever which demonstrates the skill of school base of these people still 2-2 but Madeira has sent you advantage which means if it remains 2-2 he will automatically win because he had the first unopposed score Sun Takhandikov has got to score again if he has the chance, any chance of winning. Normally, this would have been the end of the match. People would have stayed back for a, a hand pay decision, but now that isn't the case. There's only two seconds left. Madara has gone out of the tatamis on Hansoka Chui, but he automatically gets the win because of Senshu. That was a very good match, very good match.
move on now to the female. Minus 50 kilogram world champion in this is one of your French compatriots here, Alexander Papia. World champion. Hasn't, uh, she's not in the finals. We have a contest here now between two Japanese athletes. Ayaka Tadano in Aka in red and Mio Miyahara. Very, very experienced, excellent competitors, great pedigree. So Hayaka, she has been first uh, at the Asian Karate Federation senior in 2015, Billy. And also she won two times the Karate World Premier League in 2015 and 16 as well. So as you said, you are right, she has a, a quite a big pedigree. And uh, her opponent, Miyahara Miho from Japan as well, she has been twice a world silver medalist. And also she has uh, been twice a bronze medal at the world in 2011 and 15 as well. She has been first at Asian Karate Federation uh, in 2014. And uh, I think she has been also looking for gold medal in Karate 1 Premier League as well. So this could be the opportunity. This could be her day in the Premier League of 2017. Tatano in red for Japan. Miyahara in blue also for Japan. Referee for this match, Julius Maninsky of Hungary. Two minute match. <laughs> This should be full of action. As we said earlier, the Japanese players tend to have one direction, yeah. and that's forward. It's going to be a stronger position, for sure. Tadano. Even if they know each, each other. Tadano just trying to chew them washi, Gary, but not good enough. And chew them washi comes again, back in from Miyahara. here in the background there. Tango drums of Japan. No score. One minute, 13 seconds left. Beaka Tadano, Tadano in red. Leo Miyahara in blue. We have a, a score for Yuko in favor of Mio Miyahara and she takes Sechu. Tadano has it all to do now, she has to score at least two points to win this match. To the Mawashi, but uh, Miyahara steps back outside the tatami. So she'd be penalized with the jaw guy. Oh. There was a pass. Jordan punch from Tadano, but it just slipped past Miyahara, ducked him to the side. And again, Jordan drew key from, but the distance maybe was a little bit close. Desperately tries that with the Chudo Mawashi Gary. Miyahara. Oh, good Zuki there from Miyahara. She's taking full advantage of the fact that Tadano has to go forward so she can pick her off as she comes in with that Zuki. Miyahara in blue, leading two points to zero, and she has sent you. There's another Jordan Zuki from Miyahara. It's interesting here, Miyahara just waving to the judge, to the referee, that her handpack came off because she was right on the Jogo line. Sometimes referees would allow that to run because it was uh, can be used as a tactic, can't it, to, to stop the match and give it a, a chance to come back in. Exactly, and uh, Tadano will be penalised for grabbing also. So she's now on Hans of the Chewy. With just like eight seconds left to go, Miyahara just 
steps back out she knows that she can afford to do that with only four seconds she's on Hasaka Chui but she can't go out anymore and that's it Mio Miyahara takes gold medal against her teammate Ayaka Tadana There was a video review, there's a video review gone in for to be interested because it would have to be a three point score for Tadano. If it's a three point score and it's a successful then they would win the match, she would win the match. I'm not so sure that's going to be the case. That's the only way she could win, if it is a three point score. And I think that was wishful thinking on behalf of the coach. It was, it was well tried. Anyway, it was yes. one second left, so she had to try anything. But uh, it was too far for the team. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Miyahara, a real star in the making. And the next match gain is the minus 55 kilo. This is between Amy Connell of Scotland, and she's up against Travet Kaskar of Iran. Both very young. Connell is just 20 years old. Kaskar, Kaskar is only 19 years old. Connell performed really well in the World University Championships in Portugal last summer. And she's taken two third place positions in European Championships at junior and cadet level in 2011 and also 2009. Kaksa of Iran, she beat the brilliant Ukrainian Anzelika Terluga with a Senchu decision on a 3-3 draw. But for her scoring a 9-0, a 6-0 and 8-0 victories on her way to the final. So I think it's going to be a real challenge here for the young Amy Connell to overcome the experience and the performance that she's got in this challenge against her. But just before we get on to that, we're going to be doing, having our first medal presentation. And that gives us a chance to talk a little bit about uh, what I mentioned earlier, Herb, about the junior rules for competition. Yes, Billy. Um, the WKF decided, haven't they, that uh, it's quite recently they introduced under 40, uh, 40 uh, cadets category and there were no rules specifically for the under 14s but now that's changed hasn't it yeah it's on the way to be uh, of course to be uh, official now and uh, of course we we work on the security of the athlete mostly for sure for, for, for this category because they are younger yeah so maybe we can go into details and develop so uh, in, in, uh, in junior they can make there's, there's contact allowed to the face but only skin touch um, uh, sorry, with the foot, but only skin touch. In seniors, they can make contact with the hand, but only skin touch. And children under 12, under 13, are not allowed to make any face contact at all. Is that, that that's right, isn't it? Yeah, that's what we want to talk about. Okay. Yeah. On the face for the young for the young one under 21, we cannot have a contact to the face with the, with the with a punch. Of course, it has to be full control because, of course, mainly we have attack which are direct attack and it potentially could be dangerous. Yes. So the control is very very difficult. And we try in karate to preserve uh, the maximum of integrity of our athletes. 
Uh, we also do consider that with the senior one, we have more control and more experience. And uh, because of this, we authorize the skin touch uh, of, the t of these techniques, but only the injury is forbidden. The injury will be penalized by the p uh, referee panel, but the, the skin touch by itself will be authorized. It's a tolerance that we have. Yes. And there was, uh, until last year, uh, cadets' children would wear face masks. And, and then the face masks were taken away. But under 10 years old, they wear face masks. No, uh, under 13, they wear face masks now. Is that, that, that that's being reintroduced? Yeah, that's been, you, you say that's yeah. been reintroduced. I don't have this information oh, okay. on my oh, side, yes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. But, but you're right, we I have been using the, the, the face mask on, on cadets. The, the, the important point is the, the rules at this time did not allow to the, the competitor even to touch the face mask, the face mask. So uh, it's like if it would have been a, a contact and an injury potentially. So yeah. now we remove the face mask. Yes, yeah. But I, I think that, again, it's, it's just a demonstration of how the uh, sport is changing and, and, and moving forward and, and trying to keep people protected, make sure it's safe competition, developing the skill base and, and preparing for the Youth Olympics. Yes. Because the, uh, you know, the, the rules are so important to, to, uh, to the development of, of our Olympic uh, opportunities. Like Exactly, yeah. As we said before, we've done a lot of modification and a significant improvement with the rules, especially with the, the seniors, of course, because that was the main target until now. Of course, now we're going to focus on the youngest one, minus uh, under 21, as we say, cadet also, cadet junior as well. Uh, and integrity is the security, in fact, is the most important criteria for us today. Yes, it's, 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 it's the key, it's the key, isn't it? We're now coming up for the medal ceremonies. We just uh, over there. It will be for the male minus kilogram. Karate World Premier League, because all of the competitors are representing themselves as individuals, not the nation necessarily that they are from, there isn't the national anthem. And what is uh, often being used as a signature tune is the famous John Lennon, famous John Lennon song. Not the national anthem, but this one is a world it's the anthem. world's national anthem. Yeah, and it's a good signal. Yeah, because Imagine. So there'll be three medal ceremonies before we get back onto the tatami with the Female, Kumite, minus 55 kilogram. Medal is being presented for minus 60, male Kumite, minus 67, male Kumite, and the female, minus 50 kilogram. We see here the president of the World Karate Federation on the left of your screen, Antonio Espinos, and Francis Didier, the president of the French Karate Federation. now for the minus 67 kilogram gold medal going to Andreas Madeira of Venezuela beating Irina Sagandikov of Kazakhstan in the final you have been talking about new countries coming uh, 
on the podium now and this is exactly what we have here. Yes. Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Fahad al Army. And from Morocco, Ayub Zakaria. Aliyev, Azerbaijan. And of course the all-important selfie. Thank you. Can't go anywhere without taking one of these. You have to have long arms, of course. No problem with these guys. Great photo, great friends, great sport. Beautiful image. Fun friendship. No frontier, just friendship, fair play. <laughs> respect between the athletes and they have been fighting all along this week for three days eliminatories and I have finals and this yeah. is a good message now so we have the Kimite female minus 50 kilograms first bronze medal being awarded to Serap Hoslik, amazing Serap Hoslik of Turkey. Second bronze medal. Going out. Took out of Turkey. Silver medal. Aika Cardano, Japan. And the tournament champion, Mio Miyohara. Beautiful ceremony, isn't it? Pardon? Beautiful ceremony. Lovely. It's really good to see that the skill base of the sport now has seen a, a, a vast reduction in the level of injury. Exactly. I think the new rules have been uh, the key point of this success, uh, Billy. I think you agree. We had a, a big concern about the fact that we have been removing the, the point, you know, awarding the point when we were giving a penalty at the same time. Uh -huh. Remember, some years ago we were giving a penalty and we gave some, some point to the opponent. That's right, yes, we did. And we thought that was, the, uh, that was the, the, the real protection for the athlete. In fact, we have been removing the scoring, the scoring, because it was not based on the technical, and finally it did not result by increasing penal uh, injuries, as you said. And in fact, we have very, very limited uh, injuries, in fact. Yes. I think the role of the referee is very important there. It is, it, it is indeed. And it, and it is working. It is working really well now, isn't it? In that respect. But here we go now for the female minus 55 kilograms. And in red, Amy Connell of Scotland. And her opponent here, Karavat Kaschar.
of Iran. I think important uh, is an opportunity just to make reference to the hijab. Oh yes, of course. So uh, WKF has recently approved the hijab, uh, uh, the black scarf for uh, the competitors, but also for the coach and for the referees and the judge. That's important. Uh, the only point is that it has to be uh, WKF approved, so everybody can wear the same. And only female. And only female, of course, yes. So two minute match, one minute 42 seconds still on the clock. No score, female minus 55 kilograms. I've seen the Ir Iranian uh, competitors uh, during the eliminatory, she was very impressive. Kicks. I, 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 didn't, I didn't see the uh, elimination, so I'm not quite sure. Did, oh, the, uh, definitely no problem with the way they can punch. Katsar takes the lead with a Yuko score and, of course, receives Senchu on the night Jordan Suki. And that means Connell now has got to score at least twice or two points. Good Oramawash, you go down the wash from Kaksar, but she'd stepped out of the tatami. So she now has a category two warning. But in the last minute. Kaksar is trying to adjust the again. Trying a little bit of moving out of the area. She needs to be a little bit careful if she if she's perceived to be running backwards and deliberately avoiding combat, she can be penalized for that. She steps out of the area once more. That's going to be another Jogai and Connell is putting pressure on the opponents, trying to score and recover the two points. Okay, Kaksar comes flying off the line there. Put in the score, there's uh, two flags. So the referee will now give the score. Sometimes a little difficult for the referee's position because uh, the flags can be behind him at some point. That's why it's important from the cancer's point of view. He will blow the whistle and uh, protect the, the competitor's point, make sure that that's right. This time we have a video review challenge from the coach of Connell. See the video review panel. You can see the four screens and the four angles. You see the key going in. I think they will zoom on the action to see clearly if the, the attack reached the target. And it's rejected. So the coach can't call that again. We're in the last 20 seconds of the match. Kaksar still leads two points to zero, and she has the benefit of Senchu advantage. Jordan Oromowachi from Cotton, that was really close, almost there. If that had been a three point score, she can really only go for that now. Last 10 seconds, Kaksar is closing it down as much as she possibly can. And the referee, quite rightly, has put additional pressure on Kaksar. Now she's now going to have a hunt on the Chewy for avoiding combat. Connell has last three seconds. There's a Jordan Zuki, but it needs to be a high scoring three points. But she isn't going to get that. And the gold medal goes to Harabat Kaksar of Iran. Well, I think the tactics, and you were right, firm about uh, Kassar went ahead really early on in the match. That's so difficult to come back if you've got a, a person who's so cleverly able to avoid combat like that. Exactly. Moreover, she tried to keep very close distance uh, with the opponent with Kobo in order to avoid to receive a counter-attack. So that was the limited uh, solution, finally. It was very difficult. 
So we're going to be moving away from Kubate and on to Qatar. Uh, the world champion for Qatar at the moment, and double world champion, I have to say, is Rio Kuna. Rio Kuna, Japan. And he is in the final against his teammate, Ishi Shimbaba. Ishi Shimbaba already put the cats as Anan, Pachu, Ansu, Kororumpha, Chetnyara Kushaku, and Kushokan. So can show. He's won two Karate World Premier Leagues in the past, and both of those have been in Paris. Rio Kuna, 26 years old, world individual champion in 2014 and 2016, world individual bronze medalist in 2012. Continental Champion in 2015. Six Karate won Premier League first. A massive talent. Huge talent. Rio Kuna will go second. He will have the advantage of seeing the performance of Ishi Shimbaba. To see how that works. Uwe Portugal. Sweden is the judge number one. I wish for such a final I could have been judge. It's amazing. This. It's amazing. Yes. Last year, last year I was I was the judge. Actually, I, I was privileged to be in the final. I was one of the judges in the final last year. Uh, and in that case, Rio Kuna had a 5-0 win. Can Shimbaba change that round? Can Shimbaba beat the world champion? Tough call, but he's on form isn't he and his kata is going to be super impe of the turns, I still have really good stances, really good dachi, and wonderful precision in the technique as well. You see in the background Rio Kuna going through mental rehearsal, going through the Catherine's mind, maybe a little bit distracting, it could be a little bit distracting for Shibaba, but with the concentration Chikugan that he's demonstrating here, I don't think it's an issue. direction. Yeah. It's very precise, powerful, no mistakes, proper directions, stability. Yeah. That's exactly that was where brilliant. We were that was brilliant. brilliant. And right in the face of uh, number one judge. 
demanding support and the vote from that judge. Whether you get it, we'll have to see. Toby Mike Gary. Great, great turn, great balance. This is a fantastic support as demonstration of the Qatar Super MP. It's going to be amazing to see if that can be improved on by Rio Cuna. And if anybody can do it, it can be him. Double world champion. Issy Shimbaba has thrown down the gauntlet, the challenge. He believes that he can win. Trailing 1-0 in the head-to-head -head in the Paris Karate One Premier League last year. Now it's the turn of the world champion, Rio Kiona, with his performance of Anandai. This is the eighth kata that these two finalists have had to perform if they're going to win a medal here in the Karate One Premier League in Paris. Excellent, my Yeris. This is a 5-0 result in either direction. It certainly won't be representing a huge difference. This is going to be very close indeed. Precision, fantastic stances. Rio Kuna, world champion, double world champion, has accepted the challenge from Isishin Baba. Now it's down to the judges to make their evaluation and make their decision. Will it be red or will it go again to the world champion? Rio Kiona. Two big champions, anyway. And it's a 4-1 decision in favor of the world champion. And although we have one of the judges went for Isishimaba, those other four judges were a whisker away from doing exactly the same because it was a very close decision. 
The result is, is exactly representing what you said before, Billy. We are we have two big champions, two very important champions that were very close, and the performance was not that different too much. So I think the judge have considered, in fact, that there were close and beautiful performance of Qatar. Yeah. And last year there was a 5-0. This year it's 4-1. Again, going to Cuna, but it shows it shows how close Shibaba is getting that position. Ah, Shibaba is only uh, Shibaba is 27 years old, and uh, Rio Cuna is 26 years old. So they still have time. Four years from now, they could still be going, vying for a position in the Olympics. Treat because again we have the third of the four individual kata representatives from Japan. Hikaru Ono. Hikaru Ono was one of the world winning team champions in the 2016 World Championships. She was part of the team. Her opposition here is the amazing Sandy Scordo from France. Icaro Ono beat Sandy S Sanchez, Sandra Sanchez 3-2, both performing Super MP. She's already performed Paiku, Sanseru, Super MP, Kororon Flonsu, Kanku Shot. She's done s performed seven rounds, and now her choice is Papure. So graceful. Look at the transition of the stance. Move forward. Very impressed by the position, as you said, yes. No move, very precise. Perfect stability. And this will help and authorize, of course, strength and power. It can often look very simple. And the, and, and the, and the expertise of these karateka make it look easy, but it is incredibly difficult to turn at speed and still maintain perfect balance, perfect stance. At this level, you have very, very few details to make the difference, in fact. You don't have too, too many. It's, it's all about the margins. Exactly. So, it cannot be any opportunity for error. Athletic performance. Wonderful. Japan is producing so many fantastic karateka for Kata. Amazing. Amazing. The wonderful Riku Yusang 
Kiyoshi Bits, double world champion. Karo Uno. So, Sandy Scudo for France coming out in blue. Sandy Scudo, twice silver, senior European, senior world medalist, 2014 2012, world games champion in 2015. Three European championships at junior level. Of course, we have the world games later this year. So, Sandy Scordo has chosen the Kata Kankudai. I think the judge may have a consideration of also about breathing here at the control of the breathing. As we said, this corner is a little bit from the throat. Yeah. Will it make the difference or not? That will be taken. Well, it's just a small, a small part of it, isn't it? Right, very much focus as well. Here we have the crowd encouraging the Tommy by Gary Yovakovic. That was excellent. And she finishes there. Kata Kakudai with great confidence. She knows she's done well. She's looking for that win. She may well be right. Sandy Scudo of France, in blue. Hiraku Ono of Japan, in red. And we have a 5-0 score for Haka. We're really good, really good. It was a beautiful final, sure, with big champion and high level of uh, Fabulous. performance. Yes, uh, yes. So that's another gold medal that Japan has taken in Kata. How many golds now for Japan? Several. Several. I haven't. How uh, many medals? Many, many. many. <laughs> Too many to count. We are going back to Kumite now. Yes. Okay, with a minus 75 in Mel Kumite. And we will announce the competitors for the final. It is uh, Al Sharabi will be uh, coming out for Italy in red. And, and the opposition, the amazing Stanislav Corona. Green. Al Shabi had high scores on his way through to the final. He had a 6-1, an 8-0, a 3-0, 2-0, a 7-1, and a 5-0. Impressive. And uh, about Ukraine, uh, he has been third at the senior in 2014. He has been second world place, level. world level. Second in the European Karate Federation for senior in 2014. He has been winning three times the Karate One Premier League. This so, should be a good final again. Yeah, also. This should be a really good final. 
But I think we're going to have a medal ceremony between that. Yes. That'll be for the, the, the medals that we just uh, seen being handed out. A nice view of the stadium here with the doctor. to Canada, Catherine Campbell, taking the second bronze medal. Silver medal. On to Stephanie Connell of Scotland. And the gold medal go to Tanabat Kaksha of Iran. set here at the uh, Pierre de Coubertin Stadium is uh, it's amazing. The French National Federation do an incredibly good job, I have to say. Uh, I know that you're part of it, uh, you work hard behind the scenes, but when you look at all of the, the, the set with the Eiffel Tower there, it's yeah. brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Very, very professional organization. Thank you. That's a very nice symbol. You're right. Thank you. It's a, it's a very important event for the French Federation and for WTF also. We, uh, we really try to, uh, to make the best, pro the best uh, promotion for karate. We are in a very important phase really now. We go to, we go to 2020 directly. We, we have to be very much professional. We have to be accurate on the rules. We have to be accurate on the, on the training education for the coaches and the referees. We have to do our very best to make sure that the events will be promoted as they should be. And with WKF and also the French Federation supporting this way, that's, uh, we are in the right direction. And we can feel the image also our general secretary uh, with the award ceremony, also giving the medals to, to the champions, and especially because we have Japan on the podium, they have been impressive. All honor. four medals going to Japan. In incredible, amazing. And they deserve. Oh, yes, they deserve. Clearly. They, they are the best. And the best have to be, but the best can be beat. Everybody else has to work harder. It's amazing to see four Kiruna, athletes. Kibaba, Kinjo, Horam. Brilliant. You said it was a domination? Yes. Yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> it is. But France has had some amazing uh, competitors in the past. Michel, uh, yes. Milo, Michel Michael Milo. Milo. Yes. Wonderful. World champion. But it's good that things are turning and uh, changing also when uh, different countries are involved, etc. But Japan has always been a very strong country for Qatar. Also. So used to taking gold, but today takes bronze. Great favorite from 
from the French. Sandy Scordo. Another gold medal in Qatar for Japan. Beautiful podium also. It's great to see the importance that nations are putting on sending their athletes around the world to compete in the Karate One Premier League. 78 nations, 1,243 competitors here in Paris. It is the first time we had so many countries. It's the so biggest. Many, yeah, it is the biggest. Also with referees, we had almost 200 referees wow. coming here in Paris. It was, uh, we were very proud of that, but now we are happy with the level of the competition. That's good. Nice view of uh, Pierre de Coubertin, almost uh, full with the audience. And it's, uh, the atmosphere in the stadium is so good, it, it's so intimate. Uh, and, and I can, you know, can understand why it's so popular. Yeah, and we, we have a beautiful uh, stadium in Paris, but I think the French Federation will never want to move from Pierre de Coubertin. It is such a symbol for us, not only for the Olympic also, but uh, it's an old stadium which has, of course, been totally refreshed. A wonderful history in its own right. But the history behind uh, that is so important for us, so yeah, that's important. Okay, so here we are again, back with Kubate, and this is the male minus 75 kilogram. Final between Ahmed El Shavi of Italy in red and Stanislav Haruna for the Ukrainian blue. The world champion Rafael Agiev wasn't competing here. This time Agiev came as a judge for Azerbaijan. And his judgment was all about these athletes because he's been sitting in the coach's seat making a change from competing Al Shabi in red three minute match minus 75 kilogram last year's karate one champion Majid Al Kafi of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia find the proper distance, distance, the right distance. You see on the, uh, on the, on the sleeve, on the top of the sleeve of uh, Huruna, he's wearing one of the, the new gis, which shows the sponsor's logo. Oh, yes. Oh. It looks like uh, Al Shabi is having to, he'll have to change his gears, being torn. Could be dangerous. With a tall gear like that, it's possible uh, if there's an attack, you catch a finger in that gear, it's, it's dangerous for the opponent, so it has to be changed. And he has one minute to change the jacket, according to the rule. Uh, we've seen some, we've seen, uh, not, not at this level, but in, in some competitions where you see people haven't got a second game. They can't, they can't easily access one. They have to run off somewhere and find it. But the coaches have to make sure that their athletes are ready for all options. And if they have to change the game, then they have to have it right there with them. 
I've seen that in, in match before where when was referee also they take a jacket from somebody else but it has to, to reach the specification in dimension also so it has to be very precise okay but we're okay Al Shabi's changed the top away we go again no score just in two minutes Oruna tries a Jordan Ura will watch a bit falls to the floor so there's no score there Got an Iraq and come out from there. Al Shabi. Two flags. <laughs> now, score for Stanislav Varuna. The council just reminding the referee that he hasn't given the signal for St. Chu, which is uh, very important at this point. Video review request gone in from the coach of Al Shabi. And the challenge has been rejected. So Al Shabi, his coach is not going to be able to put any more challenges in if he feels there's a score. Corona just takes him down to the ground, uh, down to the tatami, holds on with both hands. He's not allowed to do that unless it was a kick. Sarabi, that Sarabi moved forward right onto that technique from Aruna. Now the interesting thing is uh, we have two, uh, all four judges think it's a score. If they believe it to be an excessive contact, they wouldn't put the flags out for the point. But it really depends on what the referee thinks. If the referee now he's gone over to see what the doctor believes about this now the interesting point here is if it was a contact a hard contact then of course it should be penalized with a category one on the other hand if they believe it were a good score and the referee believes that the competitor is feigning of an injury it could lead to a shikaku but the referee is in the best position because he has an opportunity to consult with the doctor and quite rightly he gives the contact in the flag to come in there's a John Azuki with more control on this occasion. No problem whatsoever. Aruna extends his lead now, two points to zero. He is also has the Senchu advantage. Oh, wow, that was a, so close. Jordan Uramawashi from El Sharabi just fell short of the target. But that would have been exactly what he needed. <laughs> this time, though, Oruna wasn't uh, allowing him to come in and use those kicks. He's thrown out that, that punch. <laughs> and stopped him in his tracks. Last 35 seconds of the match. <laughs> Stanislav Aruna of the Ukraine in blue still leading two points to zero and he has sent you advantage third and good John Anzuki this time from El Sharabi that gives him a chance to come back in if he can now have a two point score he will take the lead three, zero, three to two and he would win the match at that point <laughs> He has to score at least two points if he is to win this gold medal. Oh, oh that was one really, one. really good. He was definitely first and definitely fast. There was a punch from Stanislav Haruna, but it may again have made contact. 
So the referee will award the point. Two two. Last eight seconds. We have Aruna holding on. He's on a Kekoku, a Chikoku, but this time it is El Sarabi is going to receive the warning for holding. He's now on Hotoki Chui. Only four seconds left to go. But there's definitely some holding there from Aruna. And I think that might be tactical. But he's been allowed to get away with it. Which is a little bit of a surprise. 0-0. Zero, zero. Time is up. Scores 2-2. Two, two, but Stanislav Aruna wins the match because he had the sensual advantage. Would have been penalized just before the end because of grabbing yeah. and pushing. It was definitely a tactic. Yes. I think uh, I think I, I was a little bit surprised he wasn't penalized then. True. And he, two seconds, he's still got the opportunity. He's going to hunt some with Chewie. He, 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 he could still turn around the match in that last few seconds. <laughs> because also he was trying to escape with the other ones. Maybe he could have been Joe Guy outside yeah. of the living room. And, and, you know, that, that, that could have led to either Hansaku or an opportunity for uh, Al Shrabi to uh, score that three points. Exactly. But that's all speculative now, and it's over because. Stanislav Haruna of Ukraine has taken the gold medal to secure that vital win at the first of the five Karate One Premier Leagues of 2017. You see a replay of the contact there. Just to remind viewers that the next Premier League will be in Rotterdam, the yes. Netherlands. Yes. And uh, that will be the second of the five. And to win the overall grand prize, competitors have to compete in three of the five, and they have to compete in two different continents. So here in Europe, in Netherlands in Europe, and perhaps in Dubai or in Morocco. Exactly. That's exactly the new, the, the new rules, and I will uh, I will be in charge of the referee in uh, Rotterdam. Ah, you'll be chief referee. Yeah. Ah, so you won't be able to work with me in uh, commentary. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we have the Kumite male minus 84 kilogram, and the current world champion Ryotara Araga from Japan in red, and he is up against Granavoso of Russia. Araga, world champion in 2016. Silver, second in the world championships in 2014. He's also a silver medalist in 2012. And he was a junior cadet, world champion in 2007. First place in the senior Asian karate championships and six times karate one Premier League winner. The referee is Mr. Mansour Al Sultan. Granovetov of Russia. Not so experienced as Araga, but he, the 23 year old, did beat the mighty George Sano 6 1 to take his place in this final. We have the first goal going to Ryotara Araga. Araga. Ryotara Araga has the first point and also he has sent you. You can't see uh, sent you is scored, but it's not on the scoreboard at the moment. I think now the, the referee, uh, just a reminding been called by Kansar to tell him that uh, Senchu has been scored. So Araga not only has the lead of 1.0, he also has the advantage of Senchu. Granovetov, quite an uphill struggle to try and beat the, not only the world champion, but he's also trailing 1.0. Raga is a, a really tough cookie. He took 
a tremendous blow to the face. It really knocked him right off his foot. He was fighting against Borshaw. Uh, Borshaw knocked him down. But he came straight back in and had the strength to be able to stay with it. 58 seconds left of the match. Ryo Tara Araga from Japan in red, leading. Ilya Konalbezov of Russia, 1.0. Good Chuna Tuki Joran. And it's two flags, one blue yeah. and one red. One, one, one judge went for blue, one judge went for red. The other two judges didn't support either of those scores, but we do have a video review request for both <laughs> players. It'll be interesting to see what Fariba Madani leading the review panel makes of the action. And actually, the coach, they really look in, uh, to the judge to see the reaction and the decision. And, is it, and, and we have a positive reaction here for Al. So there's a score, but there are two that are now looking to the video. So we do know that Ilya Granovesov has got to take his first score. That'll make it 1 1, unless Rio Tararaga is also successful and he isn't so now the score is going to be 1-1 one, one. but we do know don't we that uh, Ryota Araga has sent you so if it remains 1-1 one, one, Araga will win <laughs> 30 seconds left of the match Granovesov got to try and Araga tries to stop him with a Chudanzuki. There's a Chora Gizamazuki from Granovesov. We're into a Toshibaraku last 15 seconds. Araga Jordan Mawashigeri. Absolutely fantastic. Great control Straight to the face. No problem whatsoever. Raga so relaxed, just lift the leg and the speed of the technique. And the Russian competitor was trying to get closer and closer and closer and he get kicks. Great tactic, great tactic. Last second, Araga's going to be penalized for holding on. He'll receive a Hans Hokichui. It doesn't mean anything. He is going to take this match. The world champion takes the gold medal here in the Pierre de Coubertin Stadium in Paris for the minus 84 kilogram. That was a brilliant technique right in the last few seconds. He drew, he drew in Grazanovot closer and closer. Up came that Jordan Mawashi. One, it was in the right distance. He started with a kick and right straight to the face with a beautiful three-point score. Big champion. Now he's got the support by the Japanese delegation and not all the audience. Very, very beautiful match. What a great champion he's turning out to be. Great ambassador for the sport as well. Many of our Japanese karateka are doing so well in the development of karate. There we see the Jordan Zuki going over the top of the good punch there. That received that challenge from the coach. Here was the Jordan Mawashi. It was a little, it just uh, on, on the replay it shows a little bit short, but actually in reality when we saw it and heard it, it was a clear. Depending to the angle, you're right. 
with a proper angle, we see exactly uh, if it reached the target or not, and it wasn't a target, and we heard that. So that was clear, and especially the judge in front supported the technique yeah. immediately. That's right. We have now the female cubitate, minus 61 kilograms. Again, a great champion with Merv Kuman in red for Turkey. World champion in this category is Gianna Lotvi of Egypt. Ingrid Suchinkova of Slovakia is the cross one champion from 2016. Opposition for Koba is Prekovic of Serbia. Prekovic is uh, only just turned 20. She was junior bronze medalist at the World Championships in 2013. Second place in the under-21 European Championships 2016, and she's won two bronze medals at senior level. So she's got a great deal of experience to offer Corbin, who is, in her own right, has taken a bronze medal in the under-21 World Championships in 2013. Twice silver medalist at European level, and has taken two first places in Karate World Premier League. is Mr. Salimi from Iran. He will give a penalty for passivity on to both of the competitors. Should have more she went in there from Rekovic, but it, I think it hit the arm of Kovic, so it can't score. Samazuki there. A bit short. Yeah, a bit short moving off to the side. We're in the last 40 seconds of the match. There's a Jordan or a but she fell to the ground. Rekovic was trying to get that score. 0-0, zero, zero, 36 seconds left. It would be interesting because at Hante, both players have been pretty even in what they've had to offer in this match. Kuban just trying Azuki there with, with a kick, but it, neither of them came off. That will be considered in case of Hante, the quantity of uh, attack and techniques and the quality and the strategy as well. Exactly. There's a Juki attempt from Prekovic and Kuban stepped back out of the tatami. The punch was, was not good enough. But there's definitely a category two which will put on Hansa Kachui in the last 13 seconds. Hansa Kachui is not quite... There's a Zuki there from Prekovic. She has sent you, and only seven seconds to go. And she steps out of the area on Sokachui. Two seconds. And that's the end of the match with a 1-0 win from Prekovic. Giovanna Prekovic in Serbia. She takes the gold medal, overcoming the Kovic. will get a little bit warmer next match, uh, Billy, I guess. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure we have a, another opportunity. This time it's going for goal for France. Yes, with uh, Alizier. Oh, oh, and what, a, what a champion she is, and what a fan everybody in France is of Alizier. Oh, wonderful. Being, you know, as a Frenchman, you can 
tell us please all about her. Yes, so Alizie has been first uh, in the World Championship Senior in 2014, so she has been world champion. Also, she has been two times second silver medal under 21 years old wow. at the world level as well. She has been one time third uh, uh, under 21 in Europe as well, and two times she has been the winner for Karate One Premier League. Well, I mean, that's a, that's a hell of a pedigree she has. She really is, she really is something special. And what a favourite of the fans. But she's up against uh, Zaretska from Azerbaijan. And the Azerbaijanis, we know, are top fighters as well. Zaretska, first, second and third place medals at world level. Junior, under 21 and senior. She's been sec 